Myrtle Edmonds is the girl from Moses' Hula class who ruthlessly bullied Lilo. But why did she do this? I want to discover why, no matter how much Lilo attempted to conform to Myrtle's group, or desired to spend time with them, or how kind she was to them, did this little red-headed girl always feel compelled to cruelly put down Lilo? The reason? is actually fairly sad. Hello, I'm Isaac from Watso Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. On my channel, I focus on spreading magic by examining Disney films, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. As the leader of Elena, Teresa, and Yuki, who together made up the majority of Moses' young hula class, Myrtle Edmonds had a great deal of power within the social hierarchy, and with this power, she used it to take pleasure in putting down, insulting, bullying, and making fun of Lilo. While Myrtle's friends weren't too fond of Myrtle's mean and bossy attitude at times, sometimes even admitting they didn't like her and were willing to abandon her if she redirected her behavior towards them, for the most part, they were supportive and active in the bullying of Lilo. Myrtle seemed to have a kind of unprecedented hatred for Lilo, which she was extremely transparent about. Myrtle often called Lilo mean nicknames, such as Weird Low and Freak Low, to put her down. She would often point out any flaw she could find within Lilo's life in hopes of hurting her, and at times Lilo was able to see just how cold Myrtle was towards her by even teasing Lilo about not living up to her deceased mother. You'll never be like your mom. <gasps> never. Not only did Myrtle taunt Lilo, but she would also try to make Lilo's life more difficult in any way she could. Myrtle would get Lilo into trouble whenever she was given an opportunity by blaming Lilo or pointing out a mistake Lilo made. Will people who are late to class be allowed to participate? In Myrtle's mind, Lilo should have gotten into trouble since Myrtle blamed Lilo for everything that went wrong in her life, even when Myrtle was the one who had made a mistake. Myrtle? Lilo was the primary receiver of all of Myrtle's terrible impulses, making it almost seem like Myrtle didn't want Lilo to be able to succeed in anything in her life, since Myrtle frequently attempted to humiliate Lilo. Through competition especially, Myrtle was bent on beating Lilo, which often led to the stakes being raised by wagers and bets. Two, four, six, eight, who did we humiliate? Weird Low! Weird Low! Beyond hula class and school, typically Myrtle would do everything in her power to avoid spending time with Lilo, even if that meant missing out on great experiences like a massive festival. Myrtle was terrified of being associated with Lilo. The only times Myrtle ever included Lilo was when there was something to be gained for herself, like the cutest creature in the galaxy, Mr. Stenchy. But of course, she was skeptical of having Lilo around all the same. Is being weird contagious? Because I think Mr. Stenchy's catching it from Lilo. Myrtle does show some mercy to Lilo, giving her a dog trophy after sabotaging Lilo at a dog show, but for the most part, she attempts to shut down Lilo at every turn. And for the most part, Myrtle didn't see any issue with her mean behavior towards Lilo, especially since she had her friend's support. Even though she wouldn't admit what she was doing was wrong, she did have an understanding of what she was doing, though. Making fun of people is good. I do it all the time. Weird low. A part of Myrtle did understand that she feared what Lilo would do if Lilo came after her for how she had treated her, as seen when the experiment nicknamed Spooky showed Myrtle's worst fear of Lilo haunting her. Myrtle did understand that hurting Lilo had negative consequences, but continued to act the same way anyway. And because she refused to acknowledge the ramifications that were created from her words and actions when consequences would result for Myrtle and her friends, since they deserved to be punished, Myrtle would not take responsibility for what she had done. Instead, Myrtle would be unforgiving and hold grudges even when people would attempt to apologize. Apology not accepted. All of the manipulative, selfish, and merciless actions of Myrtle led to Lilo feeling deplorable because of her. She made Lilo feel different and isolated. Over time, Myrtle's bullying resulted in Lilo's confidence being shaken, her self-esteem was brought down, and she was unsure of her capabilities because of it. What if Myrtle's right, and everything I do is going to be stinky? Maybe I'm just stinky. But the sad part of this whole situation was that Lilo didn't feel like she could ever avoid them and actually felt they were the only friends she had. Why don't you just stay away from those girls? Because they're my friends. 
People who are mean to you aren't your friends. But they're the only ones I've got, besides Stitch. Since Lilo felt she had no other friends she could have in her life, Lilo desperately tried to be accepted as a part of Myrtle's group. Typically though, Lilo's efforts only just pushed Myrtle to not empathize with her situation more, and find even more reasons to punish her for being herself. It's wrong and deplorable what Myrtle was doing to Lilo, and it makes me sad that people have suffered like Lilo does. No one deserves to be treated like this, especially when they are children. Lilo was just a unique girl, and if you'd like to see my video explaining every quirk about her, you can find that video in the description. It's clear what Myrtle was doing to Lilo was wrong, but I think there are reasons that help explain why Myrtle was acting the way she was. Understanding her behavior does not make her actions any less painful, and I'm not trying to justify her bullying. I'm just trying to examine how Myrtle got to the emotional place that would drive her to torment other people. What I think is important to grasp about Myrtle is that she is an extremely insecure girl, likely more so than Lilo herself. Myrtle constantly was uncertain about how her friends felt about her, making her unsure of herself and who she needed to be. I'm sort of the leader of these girls, but sometimes I think they don't even like me. The instability of her friend group makes her feel like she has no clue what friendship meant. What kind of question is that? I don't know anything about friendship. Sure, she had friends, but she struggled to communicate to see how they felt about her and tell them how she appreciated their support, and this lack of discussion made her anxious. Not only did Myrtle feel instability in her friendships, but also within her family. The extended family who comes to see Myrtle shows very little love and patience with her. I'll be quiet, Maureen. My name is Myrtle! Myrtle often was disregarded by people who were not her mother. She was not given much positive feedback on who she was from friends and family, which weakened her confidence. But Myrtle's largest insecurity, and the one that I think that truly derives most of her bullying actions, comes from the loss of a family member who she adored when she was with him. I believe Myrtle was insecure about her lost father. Myrtle admired her father like no one else, and this is clearly shown through her May Day Festival hula dance. In a hula performance that could have been about anything, Myrtle featured her father's shop called Carl's. She loved what her father did and believed in it so much that she was convinced advertising his business was the best theme. Myrtle had a deep love and respect for her father. Therefore, it was no surprise she internalized the wisdom he shared with her. Once a weirdo, always a weirdo. That's what my dad used to say. She was inspired to behave in such a negative light because of the father she loved. Myrtle followed in his behavior labeling individuals as weirdos, sticking to her first impression of people, and vocalizing her negative thoughts. These teachings were likely why Myrtle began to torment Lilo. The lesson he used to tell her became ingrained within Myrtle, but the phrasing in which Myrtle explained her father's thoughts indicated that for some reason he was no longer in her life. It seems early on in Myrtle's life, the parent she adored left her either by choice, by death, or some other cause out of Myrtle's control. So when she faced struggles, I think she turned to hurting others, similarly to her father, to follow his guidance and cope with the absence of him. While Myrtle began to bully Lilo based on the words of her father, I think she continued these acts towards Lilo as an unhealthy way to handle her father being away, since we see from a comment that Yuki makes that Myrtle has remained sensitive on the subject of her father. And I also bet that he's never coming back, just like Myrtle's dad. Quiet, Yuki! While Myrtle's mother was still around after Myrtle's father left, she didn't dissuade Myrtle from her bullying, likely because she could tell her daughter was upset. In hopes of bringing her daughter happiness during this difficult time, Myrtle's mother does everything she can to spoil her little girl, resulting in Myrtle having dolls lining her bedroom, decked out birthday celebrations, and receiving lavish gifts. Myrtle's family was well off, and she got to receive the benefits of that. With little oversight on Myrtle's behavior and emotions, she became susceptible to common trends for children without fathers. As a fatherless child, according to Psychology Today, Myrtle was more likely to report problems with friendships and was prone to manifest behavior problems. She also had a higher chance of developing a swaggering, intimidating persona in an attempt to disguise underlying fears, resentments, anxieties, and unhappiness. And of course, all these issues Myrtle was exposed to, based on her father exiting her life, came to fruition.
Myrtle became insecure about her friends, began to act out towards other kids, and built up a front of being a cold, dominant, and powerful leader. As a child, Myrtle doesn't know how to handle her complex emotions towards her father, so instead of processing them, she acts out, pushes everyone away from her, and takes revenge on anyone who wrongs her. She's trying to take on the world on her own, as she likely handles the feelings of abandonment and self-loathing that are consistently reported by individuals who do not have fathers in their lives. My bond portfolio was really underperforming, so I fired my broker. I'm not saying that just because you don't have a father, you're going to become a bully. That's not what I'm trying to say. From the research I did on both Myrtle and individuals who do not have fathers, I can see how Myrtle became a bully. Myrtle was gripped by insecurities of feeling undesired and hoped to solidify her strong facade for the world, which is why she went after Lilo. She wanted to feel dominant and in control over someone, so she attacked the easiest target, the girl who strayed the most from having the most conventional life. Please go away, Count Freakula. While Myrtle was originally encouraged to bully others by her father, I think the behavior became exacerbated when her insecurities grew due to her father leaving. I believe she subconsciously desired to feel powerful and better about herself, so she went after other kids, specifically Lilo. Myrtle took Lilo's kindness for granted, pointed out the flaws in her in an attempt to make herself feel better, rallied friends to support her as she went after Lilo, and excluded Lilo to feel in control of her own life. Since Lilo's situation was uncommon and she was willing to show her unique personality, I think in an attempt to handle her insecurities, Myrtle felt compelled to bully Lilo. But now it's time to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts on why Myrtle bullied Lilo? I think the most important idea from why Myrtle bullied Lilo is that Lilo was not chosen primarily because of something that was wrong with her. The reason Myrtle bullied Lilo, I think, had everything to do with Myrtle, not Lilo. Let me know what you think in the comments along with any other ideas you have for future videos. To see more Lilo and Stitch videos like this one, you can find a link to those videos in the description. And if you'd like to continue to see more magical discussions like this one, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and the beautiful bell if you're new. Thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon who are amazing supporters of my videos. To become a patron and be recognized in the next video, follow a link to my Patreon page at the top of the description. Finally, as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.